commandments I write, treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, I have appointed you a sentry to the house of Israel. When you hear the word from my mouth, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked man, Wicked wretch, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked man to renounce his ways, then he shall die for his sin, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you do warn the wicked man to renounce his ways and repent, and he does not repent, then he shall die for his sin, but you yourself will have saved your life. The Word of the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, bring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him, giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture the flock that is led by his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Merida, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Avoid getting into death 
accept the debt of mutual love. If you love your fellow man and woman, you have carried out your obligations. All the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command, you must love your neighbour as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbour. That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, your word is truth, O God. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother does something wrong, go and have it out with him alone between your two selves. If he listens to what you have to say, you have won back your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. The evidence of two or three witnesses is required to sustain any charge. But if he refuses to listen to these, report it to the community. And if he refuses to listen to the community, treat him like a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you solemnly, whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. I tell you solemnly once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Joseph Mazzarazzo from the University of Oregon was in great demand as a psychotherapist and on one occasion he is quoted as saying more psychotherapy is accomplished between friends over cups of coffee than all day long in the doctor's office. He goes on to stress the vital importance of a good talk with a real friend and he says this is most helpful and things need airing. Even though this only applies to two friends, the same could apply to anyone whose attitude or behaviour is causing distress to other people. The monks in the monasteries had a chapter in their rule book called Fraternal Correction. And isn't this what the Gospel is telling us about today? If your brother or sister does something wrong, go and have it out alone between your two selves. So instead of nursing our anger, why not pluck up the courage and find a suitable time and place to talk things through? Fraternal correction is an act of charity when the intention is to pave the way for a change in another person's behaviour and not to punish or to get even or to put people down. If the person is dismissive of what we have to say, then we might need to approach the situation more sensitively. Ongoing disruptive behaviour or latent anger in one's life can often be indicative of a deeper unresolved issue which hasn't been addressed in that person's life. Psychologists often tell us that the presenting problem is more often than not the real problem with a person. If a person's bad attitude is causing you distress, it's best to calm down before you meet, because, because I can rationally say things in these situations which would be far better not said. 
Jesus often had stern words with people who needed correction. But they were always given with a view to bringing about a change in the heart of his listeners. Last Sunday, for instance, he didn't hesitate to compare Peter to Satan. Peter was trying to divert him away from the cross, which was his father's will. You remember also when he was angry with the money changers in the temple precinct because they were publicly defrauding people on holy ground of all places. He told Simon the Pharisee, who invited him for a meal, that he omitted the common courtesies normally shown to guests, and that was in stark contrast to this so-called sinful woman who went out of her way to wash his feet and anoint them. He rebuked the scribes for only cleansing the outside of the cup, but leaving the inside very unclean. And he told the leading men of his day that if they didn't change, if they didn't repent, they would die in their sins. Now some people can't accept correction or advice from anyone. That, however, shouldn't stop us from believing and praying that with the help of God they may in time have a change of heart and see things in a different light. We must never give up on people. Most of us, I think if we're honest with ourselves, get defensive when people pull us up on certain matters. The fear of being rejected or straining a friendship can keep us from being candid with our words. But when bringing up difficult subjects, it's always best to do it with respect for the people concerned. Scripture says, love, real love, mentioned in the second reading there, takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth, even when it is unpalatable. Timely correction, then, when taken to a heart, can prove invaluable. We now place our prayers and petitions before God our Father. Let us pray for those who have distanced themselves from the Christian community. May they find the courage to return to church and find a warm welcome there. Lord, hear us. We pray for people who are mentally ill. May they find healing and solace through the prayers and concern of the church community. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that the demon of fear which is associated with COVID-19 be exorcised from people's lives and replaced by an absolute trust in God who cooperates with all those who love him. Lord, hear us. As this is the season of creation, may the Christian churches throughout the world be at the forefront of movements and associations which highlight damage done to the environment through global warming. And let Christians be active in their own lives to do all they can individually to help save our planet from its ill effects. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur around this time. May they inherit eternal life. Lord, hear us. Let us pray 
things of God in our heart. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause and pray for the needs of our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gifts of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring part to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop of the old clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The season of creation is here now, and it's a time to renew our relationship with our Creator and all creation through celebration, conversion, commitment. During this time there will be an opportunity to say our rosary for creation each day in the church garden, that's the Fitzgerald Road entrance. Starting this Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.